All right, thank you for having me. I'm Porter from Matter Labs, and we work on ZK Sync, and I'm here to talk about defending ZK circuits. Um, so follow me on Twitter, by the way. I have, this is my first NFT I ever bought, still special to me. Um, like I said, I work on the security team at Matter Labs, but I spend a lot of time with our cryptographers, and so like helping secure our ZK circuits. And today I'm gonna talk about pretty much what I do at my job day to day, hopefully try and inspire some of you to want to work on security for ZK, because we need more people. And that's kind of the big picture. And I like math. Okay, so first of all, what is ZK Sync? Uh, hopefully most people have heard it by now, but I felt like I needed to do some intro slide. Uh, leading ZK rollup on Ethereum, Advancing personal freedom for all. This is something that, like, it's easy to say, but we really do believe it at our company. Um, everyone is just, like, very aligned and believes in this mission a ton, which is, like, it's an awesome place to work. Um, one company announcement to point out that's not really related to my presentation is ZK Stack is ready for hyperscaling. So if you want to build your own rollup with ZK Sync, uh, come talk to us. Happy to have you. That's like our big Dev Connect announcement. And then, in general, this is the most amazing team I've ever worked with. I have like the coolest job in the world for me. I love just like working on security, making sure that stuff is safe, like battling against the hackers. I think it's the coolest thing ever. So if, if I get fired or something, you guys should all like apply for my job because it's awesome. And the teammates really are amazing. All right, ZK Sync's mission statement is our purpose is to break financial barriers uh, and enhance the world's freedom by accelerating the mass adoption of public blockchains. And like I said, we, we really believe in all this stuff like throughout the whole company and in everything we do. All right, now to the main part of the talk, defending ZK circuits. Just at the introduction, I'll talk about attacking ZK circuits because we have to know what we're gonna defend against. And then I'll talk about the traditional defenses, which are probably the stuff that you all expect already from this presentation. The innovative, which is kind of the more fun new stuff, which I think is going to be very exciting. And then the future of ZK security and conclusion. Okay, so first of all, what are ZK circuits? This is like, I think about it more as like, how are the ZK circuits used? This is the code that the prover is like actually going to prove has been done correctly. And so for ZK Sync being a rollup, we need to prove that everything that happens like inside our virtual machine has been done correctly. And this giant diagram that you can't really read on the right side of your screen is a picture of all of the circuits we have at ZK Sync. So <laughs> I won't walk through all of them. If you can see near the top in the center is the main VM circuit. That's kind of the, the starter central one. And then there are lots of supporting circuits and all of that together is what I'm gonna talk about defending. Um, more or less, like all of those things, I'll, I'll do like a brief coverage of, start with the main VM, but you leave some parts like memory for later, uh, checking the signatures is like happens in other places, and then on the right hand side is stuff like um, event queues and like sending messages to the L1 and things. Um, so we kind of have like specialized circuits for a lot of the different pieces, because that helps the whole system work together faster. So it looks complicated, and it, it is a little complicated, but not too bad. Attacking ZK circuits, this is the fun part. Everybody loves attack. I've worked in cybersecurity my whole career, and all the trendy stuff that makes the news is the attacking, so this might be the most fun part of the presentation. Uh, we have about $450 million total value locked on ZK Sync era. I checked L2B this morning, so that's still accurate. And like basically, so how do I like sleep at night knowing that more like in some sense, the reason all of that money is safe is because of cryptography in our ZK circuits. And if one bug goes wrong, like potentially danger could happen. And I'll explain some how we have some today, how we have defense in depth so that one error shouldn't be enough to actually break the whole system because it's hard to write perfect code. You've already seen that the circuits are a little complicated. Um, and so, yeah, how do I sleep at night knowing that we have this much money on our blockchain? You might have seen this article circulating recently. Uh, one of our amazing security partners, Chainlight, found a pretty big bug in our existing circuits. 
Um, and so they, they have a spicy title of saving $1.9 billion, which is technically, it is the total amount of money that's been sent over the bridge since um, that time. Like I said, we only have $450 million total, so it's a little bit of like a big number. Anyways, to the code, um, our, our fix for this huge bug that was found is just shown in that commit right there. It, it, it is a one line change and that would have protected this whole hack. And so again, this gets to like, how are we gonna defend this stuff when one line of code is this important? Okay, so traditional offense, defense, uh, ZK audits. Uh, we work with individual auditors and companies as a whole. Uh, trail of bits, spear bit, chain like, like we saw on the last slide, many others. Uh, thank you all for helping us. Uh, we do have an internal security team, but it's much easier to, like, we, we can't do everything ourselves, and we really thank all of our partners and everyone who helps us. Uh, ZK audits are a great choice for security when you want, like, specific domain experts and time dedicated to one section of the code base. So if we know we have like some important changes happening to one section of the code base, like if we rewrite like a large portion of the code uh, and we really want someone to focus just on the one piece, like audits are a great way to go. Competitive audits are a lot more fun. Uh, recently, we gave away $1.1 million. Well, in progress, it's <laughs> the judging is almost done. The, the contest has concluded and we're filtering through all of the findings at the moment. Uh, we've actually finished filtering through most of the findings. I don't know which day Code Farina will announce the final results, but it should be soon. And um, anyways, so if you haven't heard of competitive audits, basically for three weeks, you look at our code, find as many bugs as you can, and then we give away a bunch of money to everybody who found bugs. Um, really cool way to potentially make a lot of money in a very short amount of time. And these types of audits are amazing because we get so many different eyes from like all kinds of people in the ecosystem. And you might think like compared to hiring one specific audit firm, maybe these people aren't as talented. One, I would disagree. I think like there's talented people everywhere. And then two, you also see like a lot more unique ideas of like different kinds of attacks that like if you're kind of like stuck in finding the same routine vulnerabilities. You don't think as creatively, and we find that we see a lot of creative findings uh, during these big audit contests. Um, bug bounties. So bug bounties always open, ongoing. If you do find a bug, we will pay you pay you for it. Um, that's we pay Chainlight for their vulnerability that I showed in the earlier slide. And so pretty much at any time, if you need to, like this is kind of like an emergency like backup for if like, yeah, something gets found on your own and we, we will reward you for that, so. All right, all of that's like pretty standard stuff that you may have expected already. Specifically, let's get into like cool things we can do to try and protect ZK circuits. So one is fuzzing. Um, I'm not sure if you're not inside like the security field, you might not have heard of fuzzing before. It's a simple idea is that we should just spam a bunch of weird random values at stuff and see like if anything breaks. And as is like very good to do, it's a little challenging to set up in practice, and so that's why it's like maybe not used everywhere all the time, uh, especially for zk circuits because of like they're a little complicated. You'd have to set up fuzzing specifically for your like arithmetic constraints or like however you decide to do the input. Um, nonetheless, fuzzing's great for catching like errors that maybe like edge cases that test cases might not have covered or something. Um, fuzzing's like a, I think it's like a fun way because you don't even really have to like think about it ahead of time. You just are going to spam like tons of weird values and if something breaks, then you go figure out exact what line broke and um, I think fuzzing's cool. Second is formal verification. The idea of formal verification is basically to turn all of your code into like this very specific math, which it sounds a little bit like ZK anyways, uh, but it's, it's like a different specific math. And then you run like a satisfiability checker to see whether basically your protocol does what it's supposed to. And so I think formal verification is amazing 
In the crypto space, the only place I've really seen it used is uh, the move language from Sui and Aptos and those chains. Um, it's not, the, the hard part about formal verification is that like if your code base changes very frequently, then it doesn't make a lot of sense because if we're just like rewriting massive pieces all the time, uh, it's hard to like set up any formal definitions of what this code is supposed to do because it keeps changing. Uh, so once I think we reach like a more kind of solid defined code base, then it will make sense to do formal verification. Fraud proofs for ZK proofs. I think this is one of the funniest ideas and it's actually, it's pretty cool. So if a ZK circuit's under constrained, that means is you could generate multiple proofs from the same data. And so the idea is that <laughs> you could set up uh, similar to like fraud proofs for optimistic rollups where you wait for someone to prove like that some bad state transitions happened. Uh, with this, you would wait to see if someone can generate like a different proof. And if someone can generate like a different proof and you have two different proofs uh, for the same data, then there's some under constrained vulnerability somewhere. Uh, it, I, I write on the slide that it feels bad because then like the finality time like slows down all the way back to optimistic rollups. And so we probably won't like go with this one, but it is fun to think about and brainstorm like maybe <laughs> combining the best of both worlds. Trusted execution environments. Uh, this is what we are going with. This is one of our big announcements for this week is 2FA using ZK rollups, using SGX. Justin Drake had a blog post on it about a year ago and we took it seriously. And I think it's on testnet now, not quite live, but uh, so you can use like TEs, trusted execution environments such as SGX or others and run the code that should be going through the circuits through the trusted execution environment. And the idea is that um, whatever comes out from the trusted execution environment should, like the end result should be the same as whatever comes out from the circuits. And then you can basically have like a, a separate code that does the same thing as circuits without all the ZK nonsense. And um, you can like only update the state root on Ethereum if we do both of these things at the same time. This way, if a fake ZK proof is like generated, then we would still um, be able to, we, we wouldn't update the chain until also we got a proof from the trusted execution environment. So this, this one's very exciting. I think like I'm super happy that we have teammates who are working on this stuff and specialize in this field. Um, I think it's gonna be like a big, big upgrade for the security of our ZK circuits and pretty much means that as long as they're not bugs in both pieces of code, um, then, then like I can sleep at night. <laughs> uh, the alternative to this, I actually was just listening to the Lambda class presentation. They've written their own version of like Starkware's prover. And so for them now, they have like two provers and so they've rewritten the code twice and so hopefully there isn't a bug in both of them. And this is kind of similar, except instead of rewriting the prover and ZK, we've rewritten uh, essentially the same code inside a trusted execution environment. So we still might also want to like generate our prover in different languages or other alternatives like that. Um, but anyways, trusted execution environments, cool. So. That is most of my talk. I think there's, there's one more thing that's not in the slides, um, but I think uh, ed education around all this stuff is very important and documentation. If more people could understand our ZK circuits, I think more people will find bugs in our ZK circuits. And so this is something I'm actively working on is helping people understand like what's happening because really like how do you really trust <laughs> Everything that's happening at ZK Sync, uh, not that many people can read the code currently. And so I hope that we get to a state where like many people throughout the ecosystem can like easily look at the code, review it, and appreciate it, and, and find bugs <laughs> and report them. So, all right, concluding thoughts. Prediction for 2025, I, I committed to some numbers. Um, the ZK industry will expand massively in terms of money. I don't know exactly how big, or I won't say on stage, but uh, ZK performance, I think, will still increase like 40x from here. I think the 
this, there's still tons of room for improvement in this field. Um, I know we have lots of plans at CK Sync for keep continuing to get faster and faster. And also there will probably be like at least 10x more jobs in ZK security. At the moment, this is a very small niche field and I hope that, um, I, I think more people are getting inspired now, but if any of this sounds interesting to you, come talk to me. I think this is a very cool uh, job and I'd love to have you in the industry. So thank you. Thank <laughs> you.